My shirt says bacon fixes everything. And on the surface, it would seem like that's a valid and totally legitimate claim. Because bacon can make so many things feel so, so good. But it kind of feels like false advertising. Because even bacon couldn't make this week's raw sizzle. Even bacon couldn't help this week's raw taste good. And, and I already know, I can imagine the excuses that are going to come out. Vince McMahon must have been back this week. That's why the show sucked. We can never, ever blame Paul Heyman. How long are we going to be on this vicious cycle? Every time you think a show is good, you're going to credit Paul Heyman to kingdom effing come. Every time a show is bad, you are ultimately going to blame Vince McMahon. Oh, he's there or he's not. In the grand scheme of things, Vince is still the guy over everything. He oversees everything. So if you're going to give him crap for all the bad, then you have to give him credit for the good, too. Of course, that's not the way this works because you know, context is important and we don't deal with context in this world. But the simple context for this week's show is there wasn't a lot that happened. What did was mostly lame. And it's just, you sit there and you, you wonder, like, as boring as it is to watch this three-week show every week, it has to be incredibly boring to write and produce this show. Because I can't imagine you sit there and look at this beforehand and think, well, this is going to be good. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be compelling. This is going to help somebody get over. There's no way that any of that applies. Like the Sasha Banks problem. It makes sense, in theory, that you're going to start off the show with her. Okay, fine. But if she's supposed to be the boss bitch, if she's supposed to be legit, then fucking act like it. It was like halfway through the promo, she lost her train of thought. You had a whole week to plan and prepare this. If you guys were writing her promo 100% of the way, you had to come up with something better than this. And if she was just giving talking points and going out there and winging it, then you've got a whole week to prepare for this, you stupid bitch, and that's the best you can do? Like, I don't know which one it is. Either way, it doesn't matter. Like you're setting this up like this is going to be a big deal. This is going to be a big thing. She literally would have been better going out there and just standing in the ring for a couple minutes with a smile on her face and saying, I'm the boss, bitch. And leave. It just didn't work. Later on, now maybe part of that is because you have the promo and then Natalia comes rushing out. So any heat you were kind of getting on Sasha goes away. Well, that's, a, that's a different conversation. Uh, the match that she had with Natalia later on, I think, worked better, uh, especially the way she was working Natalia's in injured arm in her bank statement. The smile that she had when she was applying the bank statement, like, the little things matter. It's the small details that can make all the difference. And that was really good. But once the match is over and Sasha is just kind of smiling and dismissive, getting ready to leave, she comes back and attacks Natalia again. Why wouldn't you work the arm again? I, I, I just... The... Damn lack of attention to details. You actually had a little bit of it in their match, and then you just don't go there. This is a thing of... I saw somebody earlier in the night talking about Sasha Banks' promo was fire, and she's comparable to The Rock. Like, that's how stupid professional wrestling has become. Sasha Banks barely got a reaction with her promo... The Rock used to have people eating out of the palm of his hands every time he got the damn microphone. But people are this idiotic now that they're comparing what she said to the freaking great one. And that is not just pumping up the past. I mean, that's just reality. What else did you have on this show? A couple of freaking King of the Ring tournament matches. Ricochet and Drew McIntyre. Who the hell gave Ricochet... Interview time. Why would you let Ricochet talk? And what the hell is so special about Ricochet? And while we're at it, frankly, what the hell is so special about Drew McIntyre? Yes, Drew's got some size. Okay, that's great. He can go in the ring a little bit. A lot of dudes can go in the ring. It doesn't fucking matter. He can't get a reaction to save his damn life, and he shows no personality or charisma whatsoever. ever. And Ricochet, oh, well, well. He can flip and fly around. 
But of course, it is so perfectly suited for today's WWE and today's wrestling business that the flippy vanilla midget beats the main event-sized vanilla guy. They're both fucking vanilla, so it really doesn't matter to me. And then The Miz losing to Baron Corbin is something that should outrage me, but The Miz doesn't work as a babyface. He never has, and he never really will. Losing to the guy who you feel like is about to tell you what the soup of the day is. And by God, it almost feels like they're setting up for Ricochet and Baron Corbin in the final. I'm assuming they're on different sides of the bracket. And if that's where they're going, like, the king of the ring, if you're going to do it, should be a way that you're stamping somebody as saying, they're a future big-time player. They might not be in that spot yet, but someday they're going to be. But if you're telling me it's going to be guys like Ricochet and Baron Corbin, it just again reminds me of just how bad things really, truly are. It's kind of a throwaway match thrown in there when Bailey and Nikki Cross. It's, it's, did that advance anything? Did that do anything? No, it was just there. And then you got the tag team turmoil match, which basically to me was an excuse to say, hey, we don't have to write 45 minutes of show now. We're just going to throw out eight tag teams. Oh, good night. Oh, Lord. At least I could say Otis has a personality. And when you see that rare individual that actually tries to be a character, actually tries to be a personality, they really, really stand out. And it's cool to see. But it's shameful that Bobby Roode is wasted on crap like this. We're going to throw him in to a random tag team with them all people! <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! And then they're going to be like four damn teams, even though they literally just got thrown together, even though Ziggler's just been getting squashed all hell the past couple of weeks. And they win this match. So they're going to face the other randomly thrown together tag team in Rollins and Strowman and at the damn paper. You're like, what the fuck is going on here? You've been squashing the dude and making him a joke for several weeks to then immediately come back and have them be a part of a tag team that you just put together that beats several other teams and is, for all intents and purposes, we probably believe, going to be the next tag team champions. That's why nobody can take any of this crap seriously. Make up your damn mind what the hell you're going to do with these people. And of all people, they know what way. You're going to saddle Bobby Roode with. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Ah! Ugh. 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 And not just the reaction to you have to almost seeing Scott Dawson's asshole. I'm just saying. Uh, Cedric Alexander and Cesaro. You know, again, I guess because Alexander's in the King of the Ring tournament, you want to feature him, whatever, but okay. Reasons? Ugh. Too much meaningless, pointless crap, including some of the King of the Ring uh, tournament matches, but... It would, what it really bothered me was the things with actual entertainment potential and value and the way that they happen this week. Like the Street Profits just being this ridiculous-ass hype team for the things that are going on. Like either promoting what's coming up or hyping up what we already know. If you're going to have them, use them better is all I'm fucking saying. And to me, as far as the Street Profits go, if they're still the NXT Tag Champs, Shouldn't they be sitting there when they're talking about the tag team turmoil match and saying, you know what? Why the hell aren't we in this match? I'm just saying. But, but here's the thing, like, if you're going to utilize these guys as hype men, then have them do hype type of shit. If you're in New Orleans and they're talking about Bourbon Street, then have them record stuff when they're down on Bourbon Street, down on the French Quarter, whatever the hell. Have them go surprise Drew Brees at home. I don't give a shit what you do. Do something. Something. Bring Zion Williamson in. Have him party with him. I don't fucking know. Do you get the point of what I'm getting at here? Just dumb. Then you wait till hour three to do anything 24-7 title related. And then it's just basically a recap of what happened over the weekend. So you've taken one of those few things that actually provide some entertainment value to the show, and you minimized it. And then you wait till hour three to show the Firefly Funhouse vignette. 
Like, in theory, it doesn't really matter where it's placed on the show, but damn it all, I'm trying to find reasons that I can actually stay awake and make it through all three hours of Raw. And newsflash, I ultimately did it. Once we got the main event, it was CPCP time for the slight that I had to wake up at four in the morning and pull up the DVR and watch the fucking main event. Too much crap early on in the night to where you got to the stuff that could have been good or was good. It was way too damn late to save me. Ridiculous. It's cool that Bray Wyatt isn't actually physically appearing on every show. But at the same time, like, waiting until hour three, it's just a little too late for me. Mix it up a little bit better. And then the main event, the U.S. title match. Maybe I'll find it er funny early on in the night when he had the interview, the Strowman, and all of a sudden here comes Rollins. And Rollins is your freaking world champ. And he got a polite golf clap. That's the reaction after all the crap you've done to try and make him cool, beating Lesnar clean again, have a Stone Cold Steve Austin do a stupid Skype thing, which is just talking about Seth freaking Rollins. All of these other things. And your universal champion, your world champion on the Raw brand that you're trying to force out on everybody's damn throats gets a polite golf clap. And not just a polite golf clap reaction, but the type of polite golf clap reaction that a dude would get when he mercifully puts in the putt to finish off his fucking triple bogey. That's your world champ! And that's the reaction he got. And you could say, well, damn, the New Orleans crowd sucked pretty much all night. They did. But watching this crap, can you blame him? But at the end of the day, even lame-ass crowds, when you got somebody with real star power, especially in this schmaz of shit, they are going to pop. They did it because Seth Rollins is lame and he fucking sucks. Ugh. And then the match. It's Braun Strowman. It's AJ Styles. United States Championship. The Eddie spot is whack. If it's not Eddie, for the most part, kiss my ass. You know, go through all of this just to get to where you know Strowman's not winning the United States Championship. Just so that way Braun Strowman can sit there and wipe out your top heel group or one of your top heel groups. One on three. All right, what the hell is going on here? Just so that way you can build up Strowman so you can feed him to Seth freaking Rollins at Clash of Champions. Ah! <laughs> Like, what of real value happened on this show? Like, how could you sit there, look at this show beforehand and how it's laid out, and think that any of this is going to be any damn good? And to the knuckleheads talking about, this match was decent or that match was decent. If the performers don't matter, if you don't have characters, you don't have personalities, and you don't have damn stories, then 